All right, so chapter nine, we're gonna talk about re-expressing the data. Um, so everything that we do is we're gonna collect a bunch of data, quantifiable, uh, and then we're gonna analyze it and try to figure it out. Try to figure out what it means and we'll use graphs and stuff and then we can do a bunch of different stuff. But a lot of times, um, things aren't clear and we gotta re-express the data, okay? So we cannot use linear models unless the relationship between two variables is linear. Um, there are scenarios where you have things that look linear, um, but if the range is not all that broad, um, basically other models might have a better fit than the linear model, and you just don't know. Sometimes you gotta try it. So, Often re-expression can save the day, straightening bent relationships so they can fit and use a simple linear model. Two simple ways to re-express data are uh, logarithms and reciprocals. Re-expressions can be seen in everyday life. Everybody does it. So sometimes we want to leave things linear. Uh, the log one is, using logs is like the most common one in research. They always and we'll, well, we'll talk about it here. So anyways, here's a linear relationship uh, between fuel efficiency and weight in pounds for late model cars uh, that looks fairly linear at first. Now, it looks like a straight line, but doesn't it also look like a curve a little bit? So I could tell that I could probably do like some sort of, uh, well, the inverse would um uh, a, a ratio would probably be better than, uh, anyways, uh, than linear. And and then uh, look at the residuals for this. So the residuals for a linear model, they're kind of all over the place. Now we can re-express this fuel efficiency as gallons per 100 miles, a reciprocal, and eliminate the bend, okay, so what are they doing? What they're doing is they're taking the weight and then they're changing the fuel efficiency gallons per 100 miles. And it just gives you a little bit better straight line. But now when you look at the residuals, the new model seems a little more reasonable than the previous one. Um, so goals of re-expression, for example, make a distribution of a variable um, as seen in a histogram to make it look more um, symmetric, right? So what they're saying is here you have the assets, right? Um, and the number of companies that have that many assets. And then when you take the log of the assets, when you run it through a logarithmic function, you, ha you seem to have a little bit better of a symmetrical distribution. Um, so then make the spread of several groups as seen by the side-by-side -side box plots more alike even if their centers differ. So when we look at the one on the left, it seems like this is uh, the, the range here or the interquartile range is much larger here than say this one. But when we re-express that, um, they look a little bit similar. Okay, so that's just, uh, um, and this is the assets uh, and um, the market sector. And then now you have the log of the assets compared to the market sector. Okay. Uh, goal three, make the form of a scatter plot uh, more nearly linear. So we have this one here where you have the assets and you have the log of sales, right? So this was a mess to begin with if they're already talking about the log sales. But now if you take the log of the assets versus the log of the sales, now you've got a fairly linear looking shape. Another goal would be to make the scatter and the scatter uh, uh, scatter plot spread out evenly rather than thickening at one end. So this is basically uh, kind of the same thing. You have all this stuff down here and a couple random things here, but now this one spreads out. Um, 
the ladder of powers. There's a family of simple re-expressions that move data towards our goals in a consistent way. This collection of re-expression is called the ladder of powers. The ladder of powers orders the effects of the re-expressions have on um, the data. So we're just going to go through the powers. So basically, we, we're collecting, and, and uh, when we're done with this uh, brief introduction, maybe we'll do a problem together. But you're going to collect data where you'll say uh, x equals 2, x equals 4, x equals 200, x equals... So you have all these data uh, points. And the numbers appear to be a certain thing. Now, when we re-express it, what we're doing is we're still using that input, but we're re-expressing it as a, um, a value of a function. In other words, we're going to say x equals 5, but now we might do lo the common log or the natural log of 5, the natural log of 10, the natural log of 200, and that changes the dynamic. So we're going to do the same thing with powers. So the power of 2, square the data. So if I have an input that's 5 and I square it, it becomes 25. Um, so these are the scenarios, too, of when you could try these different things. So try with unimodal distributions that are skewed to the left. So if I have data that's skewed to the left, I'm going to take that uh, x value and I'm going to square it, and it should make it a little more uniform and a little more symmetrical. Um, a power of one, raw data. Data with a positive or negative values and no bounds are less likely to benefit from this form of re-expression. So we just raise it to the first power. Take the square root of something, all right? That's raising it to the one-half power. Counts often benefit from a square root re-expression. So if, I, if I'm counting something, the number of points during a basketball game, if I take the square root of it, it kind of evens it out. Right? So if this one team scores 100 points, well, now that value changes the 10 because the square root of 100 is 10. Um, if, a, if, a, if, if, um, if a team scores 60 points, well, that's going to be about 7.5 between 7 and 8. So it kind of changes the dynamic of it. Um, raising something to the zero power... Measurements cannot be uh, negative, um, often benefit from a log re-expression. So, um, when, you, when you have a negative, there's a couple ways that you can make that negative a positive value. So, one of them is to hit it with a log. Now, the reciprocal square root, um, an uncommon re-expression, but is sometimes useful. So you take the square root and you reciprocate it. So that same scenario, if I have a basketball team that scores 100 points, the square root of that would be 10, but you would express it as uh, 1 over the square root of 100, which would be 1 over 10. Okay, And then negative 1 is just a reciprocal of the data. So whenever you raise something to the negative 1, you just flip it. Um, the ratio of two quantities, like miles per hour, that was one of the examples, that benefits um, from a reciprocal. So logs are the most common one uh, that I've seen in all the years that I've done research at Notre Dame and Northwestern. Uh, a lot of times we'll look at the data and then the principal investigator will say, hit it with the logs, um, and that's just a nice way to clean up the data. So when... None of the data values is zero or negative. Logs can be a helpful ally in the search for a useful model. Try taking the logs of both the x and y variable, then re-express the data using some combination of x, or like log of x, versus y, or log of y. So whatever your values are for the x parameter and or y parameter, just input those into a log. It could be a natural log, common log, Right, and you know that when we say just log, we're talking about log base ten. Okay, natural log is a log base of e. So, anyway, so um, an exponential, uh, your x-axis just stays as x, 
and you take the log of y. This model is the zero power in the ladder. Um, approach useful for values that grow by percentage increases. So they're giving you some scenarios when you want to do one or the other. The logarithmic model is when you take the log of x and then you just leave the y value alone. Um, and this is useful when a wide range of x values or a scatter plot descending rapidly at the left but leveling off towards the right may benefit from trying this model. Um, and then the power, that's the log of x and log of y, it's sometimes called the Goldilocks uh, model. Um, when one of the la latter powers is too big and the next is too small, you know, that's why they call it Goldilocks, too hot or too cold, okay? But this one might be just right. So this tends to eliminate some of the extremes. Um, uh, multiple benefits of doing this. We often choose the re-expression for one reason and then discover it has helped in other aspects of the analysis. For example, a re-expression that makes a histogram seem symmetric might also have uh, straightened the scatter plot or stabilized the variance. Okay. So let's look at this one. It says, if this curve, remember how I said that, that data uh, at the very beginning looked like a curve and, and not as much of a straight line? If there's a curve in the scatter plot, why not just fit it to the curve of the data? Makes sense, right? So the mathematics and calculations for curves of best fit are considerably more difficult than lines of best fit. Um, that's very true, right? So if you're going to try to do this stuff by hand, um, I would not want to try that, um, with that um, without a calculator. So. Besides, straight lines are easy to understand. Um, basically, almost every high school graduate knows what y equals mx plus b is. Right? So it's something that everybody can understand. We, um, we know how to think about slope in the y-intercept. Right? So what could go wrong? Well, your model may not be perfect. right? So here's an example here. If you look at this graph, they take the square root of the y parameter. Man, look at that. Not bad. Um, don't, too, don't stray too far from the ladder, though, because um, don't choose a model based on r squared alone. So what are they saying? They're saying that the residuals and the predicted, there's kind of this thing that goes on with the residuals and the predicted. Um, no bueno is what they're saying. Remember on the residuals, patterns are not good, right? Um, well, they're telling is how I should say it. Um, what can go wrong? Beware of multiple modes. Um, Re-expression cannot pull separate modes together. Um, watch out for scatter plots that turn around. Re-expression can straighten many bent relationships but not those that go up and down or down then up. So we're looking at some data here that kind of seems uh, cyclical or what we would call um, sinusigenous behavior, some sort of oscillation. Um, you don't want to do that. We just, when we re-express things, we take things that aren't straight and try to straighten them. But you don't want to take something and anything and make it straight. Right? I could do something with this data to make it more straight, um, but that may not be a practical application of my data analysis. So watch out for the negative data values. It's impossible to re-express negative values by any power um, that is not a whole number on the ladder of powers or to re-express values that are zero or negative powers. Watch for the data from um, one. Data values that are very far from one may not be much affected by the re-expression um, unless the range is very large. If all data values are large, like years, consider subtracting the constant to bring them back near to one. Um, when the conditions for re-expression are not met, a simple re-expression of the data may help. A re-expression 
may make the distribution of the variable more symmetric and may spread across different groups more similar, um, may form a scatter plot straightener, and then the scatter around the line in the scatter plot could be more consistent. Um, taking logs is often a good, simple starting point to search further. The ladder of powers of the log-log approach can help us find a good re-expression. Our models won't be perfect, but re-expression can lead us to a useful model. Um, on the AP exam, though, make sure that you cannot or that you can make accurate predictions uh, using a transformed equation. Make sure that your descriptions use the transformed variable names, not the original variables as appropriate. For example, 90 or 89.6 percent of the variation in log weight. All right, so you want to talk about like um, what they're saying there is if you if you apply a re-expression, then you have to when you're when you're talking about the model, you have to say that this is a log or whatever the re-expression is. Don't get lost in the technology. Most AP problems will ask you to re to evaluate the given output, not ask you to execute, execute long calculation, calculator processes. Um, that we could talk about more as we start to look at uh, the AP problems, the example problems that have been released by the College Board. Okay, And that is all I have for today. Any questions?